Suppose the hypothetical situation arises where Warren Buffett calls you on the phone to tell you that Elon Musk has contacted him about writing an insurance policy on his proposed mission to and subsequent colonization of Mars. Specifically, he wants insurance to insure his SpaceX heavy rocket, capsule, payload, and human capital. Would you underwrite any portion of a venture like that? This is an easy one. No, thank you. I'll pass. <laughs> well, I would say it would depend on the premium. <laughs> and, and I would say that, that I would probably uh, have a s somewhat different rate if Elon was on board or not on board. I mean, you know, <laughs> uh, you know, you know it makes a difference. I mean, if, if, somebody, if somebody's asking you to insure something, you know, I mean, <laughs> that, uh, so I would, that's called getting skin in the game and what, you know. <laughs> But in general, I would be very concerned about writing an insurance policy where Elon Musk is on the other side. Okay. Um, Tell Elon to call me instead of a jeep. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned that the best investment results come from the companies that require minimum assets to conduct high-margin businesses. In today's world, many of these companies tend to be software-driven businesses. While Berkshire has avoided investing in high-growth technology companies in the past, this appears to be slowly changing with your investments in Apple and Snowflake. As shareholders, should we expect that high-margin businesses will begin to constitute a larger proportion of Berkshire's investment portfolio over time, particularly as Todd and Ted take on larger roles in the investment decision process? We've always known that the dream business is the one that takes very little capital and grows a lot. And... And Apple and Google and Microsoft and Facebook are terrific examples of that. I mean, they're, they're, Apple has $37 billion in property, plant, and equipment. You know, Berkshire has $170 billion or something like that, and they're going to make a lot more money than we do. They're, they're in better business. It's a much better business than we have. And so in Microsoft's business, is a way better business than we have. Google's business is a way better business. Uh, so it, we've always looked... We, we've known that a long time. We found that out with C's Candy in 1972. I mean, C's Candy just doesn't require that much capital. It, it, it doesn't have, it, you know, it has, it has obviously a couple of manufacturing plants, they call them kitchens, and, uh, but it, 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 it doesn't have a big, it doesn't have big inventories except very seasonally very, for a short period. It doesn't have a lot of receivables. So, very, you know, those are the kind of businesses we, they're the best businesses, but they command the best prices, too. And there aren't that many of them, and they don't always stay that way. So uh, we're looking for them all the time. And we've got a, we've got a few that are pretty darn good, but, but uh, we don't have anything as big as the, as the big guys. But that's what everybody's looking for. That, that's, that's what capitalism is about, people getting a return on capital. <laughs> and, and the way you get it is having something that doesn't take too much capital. I mean, if you have to really put out tons and tons of capital, utility business that way, it's not a it's not a super high return business. You just have to put out a lot of capital. You get a return on that capital, but but you don't get you don't get fabulous return. You don't get Google like returns, at, you know, or anything remotely close to it. Um, the, you know, we're proposing a re return in the in the uh, transaction with uh, the proposition with Texas. I think it's a nine point three percent. Nine point three. Yeah, and uh, you know that. But if you look at the return on most American businesses on net tangible assets, it's a lot higher than 9.3. But, but they aren't utility businesses either. We are grateful for their efforts. But Todd and Ted are still not made available to shareholders at the annual meeting each year. Given their growing importance to the firm, can you discuss this policy and whether we can expect to hear from them more in the coming years? They're both absolutely terrific. And that's one reason I don't want people quizzing them on stocks. <laughs> they, they, they are assets of Berkshire. And just uh, we, there, there's no reason for them to be out educating other people on how to compete with us. Uh, and it wouldn't it, – it, 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 it always seems so silly that, that people expect – they don't expect you to – they don't expect Merck or Pfizer or something to tell them exactly what their scientists are working on, you know, and where they stand and where the failures have been so they can eliminate those. Yeah, they, and, and, you know, the, 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 if you've got talent that knows how to evaluate businesses, and, and those two fellows have been, they've gone far beyond that. Uh, they have terrific assets, and they, they, love, they love Berkshire, and they work extraordinary hours. But, but we don't really want them going around 
with people asking them questions about why you like this industry better than that industry or anything of the sort. What are your current thoughts on China and whether the communist leaders will allow businesses with strong leadership to flourish in decades to come? Well, I think that uh, that the Chinese government will allow businesses to flourish. It was a, one of the most remarkable things that ever happened in the history of the world when a bunch of committed communists just looked at the prosperity of places like Singapore and said, the hell with this, we're not going to stay here in poverty, we're going to copy what works. And they changed communism, they just accepted Adam Smith and added it to their communism and said, now we have communism with Chinese characteristics, which is China with a free market with a bunch of billionaires and so forth. And they made that shift. They deserve a lot of credit. Warren and I are not quite as good at that as changing our minds in many cases. <laughs> yeah. and, and that was a remarkable change coming from such a place. And, of course, it's worked like gangbusters. It had this enormous growth in the average income of the average Chinese. They've lifted 800 million people out of poverty fast. And it, it, there was never anything like it in the history of the world. So my hat is off to the Chinese. And I think they will continue to allow people to make money. They've learned it works. The Chinese, I love what the guy said in the first place. I don't care whether the cat is black and white as long as it catches mice. That's my kind of talk. In that list of the 20 most valuable...